If you clicked on this video, you probably already know NFTs and crypto are the worst thing to ever happen on this planet. And now that things have kind of settled down in the crypto and NFT space, and now we have all this money. I think this is the perfect opportunity to look back and see who the biggest con artists of our generation are. This video will trigger you if you watch or follow some of these people, so I do apologize in advance. But the fact of the matter is, I got paid money to promote a pump and dump. If you're already wealthy, living in a mansion that is excessively luxurious and you still choose to scam people who you know for a fact have less money than you, you are objectively not a very good person. I'm coming for everyone's neck in this video. This is your final warning. S tier is one of the best scammers on earth, will sell their soul and their mother for an additional million that they do not need. F tier, you at least have some sort of morals, some kindness, maybe even a tad bit of integrity sprinkled in there. So first things first, let's start off with the most notorious of them all, Logan Paul. Known best for his scuffed hairline and this video. Find a dead person in the suicide forest hanging. Logan Paul is a famous NFT and crypto con artist who always has a new crypto scam going on. If you watch the Impulsive podcast like I used to, you know the guy at one point was so obsessed with f***ing NFTs, his entire audience wanted to rip their ears out. One of his first projects, Dink Doink, is by far, not even close, the worst crypto project to ever be created. Dink Doink, you're my favorite coin, want you to dink on my face, take a doink on my chest, yeah, yeah. Then he promoted the Elon coin, which was just a straight up pump and dump. Oh so good, Elon Gate made me rich. Elon, Elon Gate, Gate, baby, let's go, <laughs> Elon Gate token. <laughs> Where he made upwards of $100,000. And if he were to do this exact same thing with stocks, he would literally be in jail. But as the old saying goes, because it's crypto, it's fine. I could go on and on and on for hours about this absolutely terrible human being, but the list is just never ending with Logan Paul, and we have a lot of other people to get to. So given his extensive track record when it comes to NFT and crypto scams, I'm going S tier for Logan Paul. The guy is the worst of the worst when it comes to crypto scams. Second over here, we have the Alex Jones of the crypto space. I'll have to be very careful with this one. If I say something that this man does not like, he might sue me. I told you there's a project guaranteed to increase in price. I know you would probably want to jump in, but I'm sure the first thought you would have would be, Got the cap. Wait a second, that doesn't sound right. In case you're not aware, the guy is notorious for suing the YouTuber Atozi because he hurt his feelings and then backpedaling on that lawsuit once he got demolished by the general public. Uh, but yeah, so we are gonna drop a lawsuit, 100%. And uh, I'm sorry this became public. I'm sorry that uh, this has been, uh, you know, uh, misconstrued. By All this guy really does is talk about crypto all day which is mind-blowing to me it's even in his name i cannot imagine doing what this man does on a daily basis i mean i wanted to just cease existence just doing research for this video i gotta give him some credit for the consistency he's also probably the least popular person on this list but he is a pretty handsome dude so i'm going a tier for bitboy crypto third we have the goat Lana Rhodes, known best for her podcast, Three Girls, One Kitchen, and her incredible NFT project, CryptoSys. Basically, she promised a bunch of stuff with this project, delivered on absolutely none of those promises, then spit in the face of all of her incel followers because they were apparently too toxic, yet she made well over a million dollars from this rug pull. If anyone wants to be toxic to me for 1.5 million, let me know, I'd be more than happy to participate. I wasn't able to do my job because my anxiety, my anxiety <laughs> got really, really bad. And then when she got called out for her disgusting behavior, she tried to make the conversation about the Ukraine war. And it's obviously horrible what's going on in Ukraine, but it has absolutely nothing to do with Lana Rhodes and her scamming her fans. Possibly the most obvious straw man argument I've ever seen. And then after absolutely rugging every single person who invested in this trash project, they then decided to use the CryptoSys Instagram to shill another garbage NFT project. I cannot make this up. 
I was gonna put her in the B tier, cause she only did this once to the best of my knowledge, but after the Ukraine thing, plus the fact that she promoted stick dicks with Jake Paul, we're gonna have to go A tier for Lana Rhodes. Uh, she's not at that Logan Paul con artist level. I think she's closer to the BitBoy Crypto. The consistency is not there, so we're gonna go a tad bit lower. Next up, we have Aiden Ross. How one can get rugged by a dude with a chin strap is just mind blowing to me. He promoted a crypto coin called MILF token. By the way, that MILF token shit I did a while back, I already told you guys, don't buy that shit. I got paid a bag to do that shit. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. I hope none of you guys actually bought it. <laughs> yes, MILF token. I don't understand how you buy MILF token and expect not to get rugged, as if getting tipped to play video games and being sus on camera was not a good enough source of income. He lost his beat, what? He lost his beat, but we ain't even need it anyways. I'm rapping in the streets. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. In the streets. Whoa. Bad a beat whoa. is me. No. <laughs> Wait, no, my bad. No, no. My bad. Then Aiden Ross, after admitting that he scammed his fans in the past on video. I got paid money to promote a pump and dump. Got he! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Goes on to promote fake odds, crypto casino gambling to his child audience on numerous occasions. All that being said, uh, we're gonna have to go S tier scammer for Aiden Ross over here. Next up, we have Justin Bieber. I actually am a huge believer, so I might be a little biased here. So he was involved with the project called The Inbetweeners, which was pretty depressing to do research on, I'm not gonna lie. The original mint price was 0.45 ETH plus gas. I do not know what gas is in this context, nor do I care enough to find out. From what I can tell, the project does not seem to be a complete rug. Although the prices of these things have dropped significantly, they did apparently have an in-person event in April. His profile picture on Twitter is currently one of these NFTs as well and I even screenshotted it for free for you guys so at the very least it doesn't seem like he's trying to run away from this project like a lot of other uh, influencers on this list I'm gonna have to go F tier for the Biebs um, not a full out con artist but he probably has spent way too much of his time in his life just thinking about NFTs Next up, we have Little Uzi Rug. He's literally five foot one and got a diamond drilled into his forehead. That's basically all you need to know about the guy. He is a notorious sellout. He promoted the Eternal Beings NFT, which plummeted in value after he deleted all the promotions for his project. Um, his music is consistently trash, plus he's short. I'm going A tier for Little Uzi Rug. Next up, we have the man, the myth, the legend. All I want for Christmas is that Jake Paul merch. All I want for Christmas is a Jake Paul shirt. Jake Paul. Just like his brother, the guy just cannot seem to get away from the crypto and NFT scams. He promoted the famous rug pull, Animoon. A part of this project. I love the designs inspired by Pokemon, the whole nine yards. Me, personally, I'm going to try to get a legendary during the public mint. But y'all better not miss this. Be ready for the mint. It's an NFT project that pretended to have an NDA signed with Nintendo. Then when it came time to deliver on some of their promises, the project quickly disappeared. He promoted an NFT project called Sacred Devils, which has less followers on Twitter than I have subscribers on YouTube, which is absolutely mind blowing. He also founded an NFT project called Stick Dicks. I think the worst part about Jake Paul in this context is how much income the guy is able to produce from boxing. I believe he was one of the top paid athletes on earth in 2021. He also promoted MILF token. Given the fact that what I mentioned about Jake is just the tip of the iceberg, I'm gonna have to put him right on top with his brother in the S tier. Next up, we have 6ix9ine. This right here is how you know we were in a crypto and NFT bubble. People were purchasing NFTs because the Walmart version of Little Pump promoted it, which is just atrocious to say the least. He first promoted a project called Trolls, which literally looks like they came straight out of someone's worst nightmare. Then after promoting Trolls and making well over a million dollars from that rug pull, he claimed it was because it was just a paid promotion. I didn't know what an NFT was. I didn't know what crypto was. I wasn't well informed. It was a paid partnership that I took advantage of and I said, you know what, let me get into something that I don't know that much about. 
Then, in the same apology for the initial rug pull, the guy had the balls to promote his next project, Gyne, which was even worse than the first one. What makes this so different, what makes Gene NFT Collection so different, is that it's not a paid partnership. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm gonna have to go S tier for Mr. 6ix9ine over here. Uh, the guy is an absolute eyesore to even look at. He's a rat, yet he still manages to be a beacon of financial advice for his followers. Once I saw this in the FAQs for the Trolls NFT rug, that solidified his spot in the S tier. If you did get finessed by a dude who has the word scum tattooed on his forearm... You need Jesus, ma'am.